Hello guys, uh, I am Tirumurugan. Temperate cyclones and uh, a very interesting chapter, very interesting topic in uh, geography. Uh, but before that, make it sure you are comfortable with uh, various aspects of uh, weather like uh, isotherms, isobars, frontogenesis, frontalysis, uh, pressure belts, periodical shifting of the pressure belts and uh, planetary winds. So once you are comfortable with this, uh, then uh, it will be easy for you to understand uh, this particular topic, temperate cyclones. So temperate cyclones are also called as uh, extratropical or a wave cyclone. There are three types in this, or uh, dynamic cyclone, thermal or uh, insulation cyclones and then uh, secondary cyclone. But it is this dynamic cyclone which is very important and it is this which exactly refers to the temperate cyclone and we will be discussing in length about uh, this dynamic cyclone. This thermal or insulation cyclones this develops in the temperate region because of the heating of the earth's surface. It develops over uh, continents during summer and over seas during uh, winter. So during winter when uh, the ocean water, when the sea water still remains warm, the surrounding land area may become very cold and this may create an insulation uh, cyclones in the temperate regions. The secondary cyclones, this actually generates so once when the dynamic cyclone, after the occlusion of the main cyclone, a number of secondary cyclones develop, but uh, these are not of greater importance. So let us focus only on the dynamic cyclone. So as I told you, this dynamic cyclone, it uh, develops somewhere in the mid latitude between 35 degree to 65 degree north latitudes. And this cyclone, why it is called as dynamic cyclone? Because it develops largely because of the confluence or the convergence of two contrasting air mass. A cold arctic, a cold polar air mass from the arctic and uh, a warm and moist maritime air mass from the tropics. So we know here we have this uh, uh, subtropical high pressure belt here subpolar low pressure belt and polar high pressure belt. We know that all the easterlies move from this belt downwards and uh, westerlies moves from the subtropical high pressure belt to subpolar low pressure belt. We know this thing. So because these dynamic cyclones it develops because of the convergence of the cold polar air mass and the warm and moist air mass from the tropics. See, uh, before discussing the phenomena behind the cyclone, let us discuss the other aspects like uh, size, shape and velocity. Size of a temperate cyclone, unlike uh, tropical cyclones, temperate cyclones are very large in extent and an average or uh, the diameter of one temperate cyclone may range between 1000 to 2000 kilometers. Sometimes it may even be tenfold more than this and a single temperate cyclone may cover one entire continent. But unlike tropical cyclones, temperate cyclones never create a stormy weather or a turbulent weather. It is more gentle as it moves at an average velocity of around 30 to 50 kilometers per hour. Per hour. But it is the convergence of two contrasting air mass which creates different segment inside a temperate cyclone and after the formation under the influence of westerlies a temperate cyclone move from west towards east and there are a number of specific regions where this cyclogenesis actually happens for example in north america itself there are a number of regions for example to the east of colorado we call that as colorado lows then in Canada, next to Alberta, we call this as Alberta Lows. Then in the Great Lake regions, and there is one more region that is that lies to the east of Sierra Nevada range. So after their formation, 
this tropical this temperate cyclone are capable of moving from west to east under the influence of the westerlies under the influence of westerlies and as i told you the path etched by this temperate cyclone is called as storm tracks even in india during winter from november uh, till april we call it as western disturbances these are nothing but uh, uh, a temperate cyclone which originates in the mediterranean and in the caspian region so after originating here it moves towards the west but again there is a roll of uh, some jet streams to bring this temperate cyclone into our country and it provides a very good uh, sufficient rainfall during the winter season which is sufficient for our farmers to raise wheat crop so now let us discuss the other technical aspects of a temperate cyclone so the very first precondition for the formation of a cyclone is closed isobars and here also we have number of closed isobars which are packed together try to note one important thing towards on the equator side towards the uh, lower end the isobars used to be bit flat bit straight and the, what is the actual pressure gradient between the center and the periphery and an average the pressure gradient between the center and the periphery is around uh, uh, 10 to 12 millibars sometimes it may even become more than that it may even become uh, 20 millibars suppose if the pressure in the center is 1001 millibar then in the periphery it may be around 1012 or 1013 millibars and i told you uh, there is a there is a convergence of cold and warm air mass the warm air mass moves like this while the cold air mass which is like this and better you all know that uh, it makes a circular motion largely because of the coriolis force and um, a cyclone in the northern hemisphere revolves in an anti clockwise direction keep it make it sure anti clockwise direction when viewed from a satellite not from the ground because from the ground if you have a look at that you may feel as if it is rotating in the clockwise direction anti clockwise from the satellite's point of view okay so there are uh, uh, four distinct uh, regions inside a temperate cyclone this is a warm front this one warm sector this is cold front and this entire region is a cold sector warm front warm sector cold front cold sector suppose if a person stands here and um, i told you the cyclone will move from west towards east so first he will come under the influence of a warm front once when a warm front passes through him suddenly you can see sky is filled with uh, nimbostratus clouds we better know nimbostratus clouds are associated with a warm front a warm front develops when a warm air mass invades the region of a cold air mass so the warm air mass will move gently over the cold air mass the warm air mass will move gently over the cold air mass as a result wind will move gradually upwards this results in the formation of 
Mimbo, sorry, Mimbo status clouds. You know, status clouds are sheet clouds, and once when status clouds dominate the sky, horizon to horizon we can see only clouds and we cannot see sky. It covers the entire sky. And the rainfall associated with such a Nimbo status clouds will be very gentle and it will last for a very long time. So, uh, first there will be a warm front where the person will experience uh, um, a calm or uh, we can say that rainfall will be very gentle. And once when it further passes, then the person will come under the influence of uh, warm front. So once when a warm front covers the area, suddenly there will be a rise in temperature, humidity will increase, skies will become clear. And once again, when it moves further, that person will come under the influence of cold front. We know that a cold front is associated with a turbulent weather. Because here it is the cold air mass which invades the region of a warm air mass. And it pushes the warm air mass up. So the warm air mass gushes up fast and look at the slope here and the slope here. This is not a gentle slope. As the warm air gushes very fast, this results in the formation of cumulonimbus clouds. Cumulonimbus clouds. We know that cumulonimbus clouds are associated with lightning and thunder. There will be heavy showers for, but for a very short duration. And once when this also passes, then that area will come under the influence of the rear end of a temperate cyclone. In fact, the rear end of the cyclone records the lowest temperature. And the greater higher temperatures will be found in the southern region. In the southern region. So that's why once when a temperate cyclone passes, that area will experience cold wave. So by cold wave, cold wave, heat wave, you might have heard that term very frequently. By cold wave, we refer to an average or deviation of around 5 degrees Celsius from the average. Suppose if 3 degrees Celsius is uh, the average temperature of that region in that particular month. And if the temperature becomes minus 2 degrees Celsius or lesser than that, then we call this as a cold wave. So generally once when a temperate cyclone leaves a place, that area will experience <coughs> a cold wave largely because it comes under the influence of the rear end of the cyclone. That's why even in the North Indian plains we can see once when there is a rainfall during the winter. Immediately after the rainfall, that rainfall is 100% sure it is because of a temperate cyclone. We call it as a western disturbance. So once when a western disturbance crosses, after the rainfall we can see the temperature will drop immediately and that, that region can experience cold waves. Uh, one more thing we need to uh, discuss about uh, the isotherm, that is how uh, how isotherms behave in a temperate cyclone. These are isobars. Isotherms generally cut the temperate cyclone at an angle. This is a very important aspect of a temperate cyclone that is isotherms cut the isobars at an angle at an angle. You see, this is a nimbo status cloud, clouds associated with uh, a warm front. See, uh, remember warm front is associated with a gentle rainfall and that rainfall will last for a long duration. On the other hand, uh, uh, cumulonimbus clouds are associated with a cold front and uh, this type of precipitation will be accompanied by lightning and thunder and the rainfall will be for a short duration. As I hope you are uh, comfortable with uh, the temperate cyclone and um, 
is one theory polar uh, front theory or wave theory or this bergen theory so this is one particular theory which explains uh, this cyclogenesis or formation of temperate cyclone about which uh, let us discuss in our uh, coming lectures so let us just uh, recap a few interesting things about uh, this cyclone say as i told you temperate cyclones are formed because of the convergence of a cold air mass and a warm and moist tropical air mass so it creates four distinct regions warm front warm sector cold front cold sector and there are very different weather events associated with all the four regions and uh, under the influence of westerlies a temperate cyclone moves from west towards east and uh, the tracks etched by a temperate cyclone is called as storm tracks storm tracks i hope you are uh, uh you all are comfortable with this uh, tropic temperate cyclone and in the coming lectures let us discuss about uh, tropical cyclone and its uh, features thank you